Prince died years ago. Not in the literal sense, obviously, but in the sense that he grew old in a profession he loved and maintained a status quo without ever having to defend who he was or why he was great. His songs and attention to the craft of making music make him a modern-day warrior against one-hint wonders, Justin Bieber, auto-tuners, and would-be imitators. For this podcast, I talk about Prince, and I frame him as an example of who a modern-day warrior exemplifies. Based on this idea I had for an episode that was probably not meant to be. Sign my footsteps, walk to ladders, fake Old men die young. This insightful phrase came to mind when I was thinking about a podcast episode that could include the the death of Wolverine and the old man Logan comic books. If you don't know Wolverine, Wolverine is basically an everlasting character. He does not really die. He comes close to dying a lot of times, but he has a healing factor that may be that brings him back from ultimate death most times. The stories um, within these comic books, the death of Wolverine and old man Logan frame him in a, in a way that chat that questions his immortality. It did not take long for me to realize that this term old men die young is very vague and rather difficult to construct a narrative around that wouldn't bore listeners. And this is no hard feelings to Chris, but he, he basically he, um, texted me and Chris is my co-host and said, I don't feel very strong on this topic. And a lot of it wasn't that you had to, that you could research that you could go into, you know, it was basically how you felt and how does this may, phrase make you feel? Sort of like listening to a song or reading a poem or something like that. You know, what did you get from just hearing those words? And hey, I have my problems with this, uh, but uh, seriously, and, and I thought about dropping it, but I couldn't because I don't like giving up on challenges, especially when it's creatively. And so I did what every inquisitive human would do. And that was, hey, go to Google. Just Google the damn thing. And so I Googled that phrase. And what I found was just a list of quotes and related to old men getting old, men getting older, then men dying as old men. So that was really an update on mortality, my mortality, which is rather feeble as with um, any one of us. So after some time, I was just scrolling through the internet. I stumbled upon this gem about warriors. You know, this this just this 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 passage about modern day warriors, and I and it really struck me as, hey, this is what I want to talk about. This is what this is what that phrase means. I don't know how they related to one another. I don't know how it came upon that, you know, because I didn't read anything. I don't believe I read anything that would tip me off in that direction. Like, hey, you should do a podcast episode based on this. So it really wasn't something that I was searching for that I remember ever coming across. So that's why it was a necessary gem, a necessary find. It was like kismet, fate that I found this thing so that I could talk about it because I was just enthralled with it. You know, I came upon it like, wow, this is cool. So um, without further ado, I'm going to try to read this in on the voice of Morgan Freeman. Don't ask me why, because I think doing a voice like uh, trying to do a voice or something coming out of your own skin makes it feel like you're with someone else in this room in which I'm alone. And so I wanted to do it in the in a different voice. I don't know. It just came to me. I'm like, you should try this in Morgan Freeman's voice. So I'm going to read this as a pseudo Morgan Freeman. Okay. 
So bear with me, people. Here we go. Old warriors do not get old by accident. They get old by being wise, having the right knowledge, and being tough. Never underestimate an old man who has grown up in a rough profession or a rough environment. These men have been around. They have done things and experienced things that you probably never have even thought about. They are tough. Their minds are tough. They have the knowledge, the skill, and the will to finish you off if you force them to do so. A boy will fight you, but an older man will hurt you. They are no longer interested in their image or their bad reputation. They have no time for games or proving who is tougher. They understand the aches and pains that come with old age. Then they are not willing to get banged up fighting to prove a point. If they have to fight, someone is going to get hurt. Now, that was horrible. I know. But it was it just, you know, that just that passage just adds for a little bit of dramatic. You know, it's just adding something to it instead of just reading it like you would in Sunday school, <laughs> a Bible passage in Sunday school, you know, because I remember back when I was a uh, when I was in high school, uh, junior high, and I was doing the I have a dream speech in front of the um the school. I had to do that, and the teacher um he was just like, you know what, bring emotion, just put it out there, just bring emotions. It's like when you see that uh, laugh, freedom ring, you just yell it out. And you know what came out, came out of my mouth, right? Let freedom ring. And then I walked off the stage. <laughs> so that, you know, it, sometimes certain things add for, you know, you know, require a little bit of dramatics. And I just loved hearing that. Just reading that was just so pivotal. It was just so striking to me because it just, bam, it hit me like, that's what you, that's how you want to live as you grow older. Just become an old warrior in something. You know, that's how we should treat our, our 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 elders and people older than us. You know, see them as warriors. I love like the Bushido code of the warrior samurai. Okay, I very much idolize that way of thinking. A link back to that passage will be at talkingwithburritos.com slash prince. You can just go there and find the link to that passage, which is um a Facebook post. That phrase was actually taken from a book by the name of Modern Bushido, Living a Life of Excellence by Bodhi Sanders. It's just basically like modern day Bushido living that warrior lifestyle today in the modern times. As I was thinking about about references, maybe, you know, films that I could use to frame this because that's what we do here at Talking With Burritos is take a thought and idea and we use different forms of media to help us explain it so that you have reference for your own discussions. So if you want to talk about this, then you have reference to go and do some research and or point other people in that direction. But then, you know, Prince died and after watching so many and watching and listening so, like watching <laughs> i think it was the um, that night that he passed uh, that day that he passed away that he was found dead or whatever mtv was playing like his music videos and so i was lying in bed with my wife and we were just watching these music videos and it just dawned on me what that prince is that model of the modern day warrior you know someone who has grown old in a profession he to the point where he's just become masterful. And that phrase, old men die young, is so is so pointed at him because let's say, let's say this man basically within the first 10 years of his career, he had lived, seen, done a lot of things. He put out records filled of some of the best music that has ever been pro uh, produced. Okay. Starting from what is it? The self-titled Prince album from 1979 all the way to 1987's Sign of the Times, 
those were slate are slated to be some of the best music Prince has ever produced. Yeah, sure. He he's produced like maybe 50 albums or so and put them out there. But those key albums, those albums, one, two, three, four, five, I guess it's five albums in that time span were considered some of the best music ever made in history, you know, and for this artist. And so at that time, you would think that this man could peek then and just like, boom, and just settle for it. I think he mastered the guitar even before he started producing music and getting it out there. He was self-taught. He's, that means he just basically was in his own zone with that instrument to the point where him and the guitar became one. And if you think about that in martial arts and the art and sometimes how people can master um, let's say weapons like swords. I'm gonna go swords because the samurai was basically they that was their sword. That was their um, weapon of choice was the sword, and they would master this thing. Every move, every swing of the sword of the blade is considered like natural. It becomes natural with them. It becomes part of their body, part of their body movements, and everything that they do. And so it was just one of those things where you think about it and it's like watch him as I was watching him just play the uh the guitar and seeing how flawless it was I thought like wow this man is a warrior of our time he has mastered that thing that 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 weapon you know that he would take on stage and just kill I don't know. I don't know what other metaphor to use with that. But they would just he would just kill everyone's expectations. And he would go well beyond what they thought that he could do it and just put on a performance that's just worthy of of being noted as supreme artistry, you know? To think of him as a warrior wouldn't be far fetched. No one could do anything to him. You can't say anything to Prince. You can't say, hey, let me challenge you. You can't do anything. None of these people, no one ever came at Prince. You know how we got crap nowadays with these people feuding with one another, trying to go at one another. And even if there were, you know, there was no, there was none of that. Prince came out on his own, did his thing, mastered it to the point where you couldn't even question him. And for him to show up at a venue was for you to be privileged that he was there. It's like bow down, bitch. It's like Beyonce. Not even Beyonce. That wasn't even Beyonce. I think she said something like that, though. He would just show up on stage. He didn't need to prove himself. You know, that's why a lot of his records were done at Paisley Park. If you look at his dis- discography, you'll see like, yes, Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, Paisley Park, Paisley Park, Warner Brothers, Paisley Park. He was still producing mov- music, but he just wasn't putting it out there for someone else to sell. He wanted to produce that music because that's the type of person that he was. That's the type of artist that he was. He just kept at his craft because he loved it and because he wanted to perfect it. And so no one could come at this man. Any other guitarist could not come at this man. Like Eric Clapton, I said this to a few people. Like I read this quote, Eric Clapton was asked, um, he would they, he was asked, like, who do you think the greatest guitarist is? He said, I don't know, ask Prince. <laughs> you know, you know, no, you know what Prince would say. Prince would say him because he was that person. I was thinking, like, as warrior, he was truly one of our modern day warriors. Just an expert at his craft. He knew what he was doing. He couldn't be messed with. You know, he rose above the level of reality with when he would play on stage. And Chris actually, uh, not Chris, but my boy Jeff actually showed me this one of a performance at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Him and a few others, Tom Petty, Steve Winward, and Jeff Lynn, and a few other people in honor of George Harrison, being inducted into the Hall of Fame that year, they performed this song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And I was just watching, like, previously an SNL performance, and I was a goth then at his this mastery of this, of the guitar. But then Jeff showed me this, that performance, and oh my goodness, people, it's beautiful. If you guys want to look it up, you can find it on YouTube. Just look up Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Prince Performance and or While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Stunning performance. And then 
right then if you really want to know what Prince was all about, if you really want to know why he is truly a modern day warrior, look at that. Just think about that. Think about him as being that. You know, you guys never underestimate an old man who has grown up in a rough profession or a rough environment. He's been around, man. He was around. He's seen things, done things that none of us have ever thought about experiencing. And so as it sucks to lose someone like that, because even on earth and even at the death, he is one of those true warriors. You know, you can still just admire his craftsmanship, really, and share it. Share with other people. That's one thing. The true nature of of immortality in a human sense is to have, especially for an artist, is to have your work be passed on to others. So if you have something, if you have a memory of Prince, because I was sitting here thinking about, I was had, I did like, because my wife was like very, she called me up and she was like, oh, and she's crying and stuff. I'm like, oh crap, who died? Who died? I'm thinking someone, you know, very close to us had passed away or something very tragic had happened to someone else, you know, very close to with the, uh, to our family. And no, it was, you know, this, this announcement that uh, they found Prince dead. And she was just so aside from herself, aside herself. And she still is just listening to certain things. You know, and I'm sitting here trying to wrap my head around it. I'm like, because I don't know what's wrong with me. I have problems like just with feelings, I guess. You know, I used to think that I was a very like emotional person or a sensitive person, but I guess I'm not as sensitive as I used to, or maybe I've just become hardened over time. But I was sitting here trying to wonder why, what, and like she's, you know, she's talking about going, getting on a plane and going to his funeral and all of these things, all of, everything that would maybe seem outrageous to a normal person. <laughs> so I'm sitting here, you know, and so it took me days. I'm thinking about like, why? Why do you bother? Why do these people bother? Like, you didn't know him. You didn't, like, you can, he still lives on. Go on YouTube. He still lives on. Turn on your iPad. Put on one one of his albums. He still lives on. So I'm sitting here thinking, like, trying to wrap my head around it. Like, why are people all in their their feelings about this? And um, then it came to me. It really did. It came to me. And my wife came into the house, and she's having another moment. And she said they played Starfish and Coffee on the radio, and I just lost it again. And I'm like, why? And she was just explaining how she used to, she would be spent hours in her room playing that cassette tape. And for you young people, that's how we used to listen to music back then. Uh, Back in the day is play it on cassette tape. Just Google it. You can find it. And so she said, she used to tell me, like, she just, uh, she just played that album over and over again. He used to listen to it and sing along to it. And so then, bam, it hit me. That's what it's all about. It's all about the memory that these that the music created for you. It's the memory that maybe a movie created for you. It's the memory of the experience that you had when you were experiencing or listening to that song or looking at that piece of art. Watching that movie, when you visited that place, created that memory for you. So with her, with my wife, all her days lounging around, dancing to Prince, sing along to Prince, that was her memory. And that memory was provided by his music, created by this man. And so that hit me. It's like, okay, well, now I understand it. Does it affect me as much? No. But I do have an experience with Bowie's music after he passed away because that Black Star album was him basically knowing that he was near death and just getting it all out in record form. The only way he knew how, you know, is in a record. He could have did a book or something, but no, come on, get in this. He got in the studio and he just told his tale what he was feeling, the things he were go- he was going through. And my goodness, very powerful. If you guys listen to listen to that album again, it, it'll strike you. It's like, it's very poignant. It's like, boom, hit you in the heart strings. But if you're depressed or anything like that, do not listen to that album. Because that sent me, but yet it wasn't that he died. 
you know, because certain figures like this, like Bowie and like Prince, they're like otherworldly. You don't you think they were just like kind of transplanted here from somewhere else, you know, to do what they did, you know, to help us, to give us these things, these treats, those treats of song, you know, those treasures, I would call them. So I really had a moment with with that. I think it was the experience. With me, I believe, like, you know, you, yeah, you can mourn, mourn, because why this person who provided you that experience died is no longer living, you know, and that's horrible. It's horrible to think about. I then understood what she was feeling. I might not feel the same way because me, I'm like, in me, I'm thinking like, wow, that sucks. He died. But after watching him, like, play that guitar, that's when I felt sad. It's like, wow, the dude, he mastered this thing. Like, we probably never have anyone else like him. Maybe you, you never have anyone like Prince. You will never. You you will never. Seriously. It was just so beautiful to see him do that because you see a person who was very at one with himself. He knew he, who he was. He didn't try to prove anything to anyone. He performed. He, he was just that person. He was just Prince. And that's a lesson that we can, a lot of us can learn, you know, Practice your art. Don't worry about anyone else. Do, don't worry about what anyone else says about you. Even nowadays, if you're in high school, like me, I struggle with, like, I want to do this thing. I want to do podcasting. I want to make YouTube videos. I want to do this. Why? Because I want to tell stories. But yet I think like, oh, what if these people, I don't know. I'm so, uh, what if these people don't like, who cares? You do your thing. Do whatever makes you feel happy. If that means wearing assless chaps, then you wear freaking fucking assless chaps, you know? Go ahead. Trounce around the stage in yellow assless chaps. And we were, I asked my wife, like, who did that first, Cher or Prince? And we believed that it was Prince. So someone can can correct me if you want to. But to do that, do your thing. And that's what the lessons you should teach, you should um, take from, like, if you go back and you start researching Prince, researching Prince, and just know that, he took his profession seriously. And he became the people person he wanted to be. And Prince was the character that he wanted to be. That was the person he wanted to be. And he created that. Whether it was deep inside him and it just came to fruition when he became a musician, that was always him. And he became at one with himself. And that is just beautiful. And when you lose someone who is totally at one with themselves, uh, it just sucks. You know, it really does. It's just horrible because that person lost their life. But that person who created so many memories for other people lost his life. And I believe that's what a lot of people are mourning. Um, and then you have a lot of bandwagoners, people who don't know who Prince is, who just know like 1999 and stuff. But other than that, you know, they can learn now, you know. And if you have any experiences with that, share it and I missed that opportunity with my mom like for I think it was like four or five months or so before she passed away. I had I I spent like four or five days with her. I traveled down there because, you know, people were worried about her. And so I went down there and I probably didn't do what they wanted me to do to try to talk some sense into her. But. This was the older woman who was hell bent on what she wanted to do. And I discovered that very soon, you know, upon visiting her, that there was nothing that, you know, anyone could tell her. She was her own person. She was going to do what she wanted to do, whether or not it killed her. I remember one time sitting around watching Dancing with the Stars. And I believe um, they did a someone, the band, you know, you know how they do those bands. They have that band. They did a cover of a Prince song. And she happened to mention that, oh, I like Prince. I was like, oh, you do? You like Prince? Oh, that's cool. We kind of left it at that. You know, she just said she liked Prince. And me and my silliness, I'm like, bam. And like, in hindsight now, I realized that I missed a perfect opportunity to share a moment with my mother. To, and, you know, just go into my room, grab my iPod and bring it out. I'm like, oh, you like Prince? Let's listen. I missed that opportunity because I was just so, uh, I held back, you know, a lot of emotions and stuff that I, yeah, I held back a lot of those emotions and stuff. I didn't want to get close. I didn't want to try to 
to do anything or wish for anything that probably wasn't there because I've done it before and it just, and it hurt me. So I didn't want to put myself out there. I think it could have been a better visit for me if it was, if I knew uh, that it was my last visit, but I missed that opportunity to share that moment with her because a lot of times we just listen to gospel music. That's all that she was playing, you know, but wouldn't that, I think in hindsight, that would have been dope. That would have been great if I brought out the iPad with the little, I mean, uh, the iPad or the iPod or, or the iPod and just plugged it in and shared an earbud with. That would have been a sweet moment. That would have been a moment to live by, you know. And um, so I missed that opportunity. You know, that was my Miss Prince opportunity. And more, and more immortality does not really exist in reality. For humans, but in memory, you can make people immortal, and that's why we look at some of the classical arts as from Leonardo, Michelangelo, Beethoven. Uh, say if you want to say Albert uh, uh, Albert Einstein, you know certain of these people that we we keep them immortal by by continuing to admire their work, and that's what you can do with like musicians that you love, movies that you like. Not only share that music or that thing, share the experience, share the memory, because that's when those stories become immortal. And that's when your grandparents, your ch- grandchildren, your children, your grandchildren will tell their grandchildren, will pass that story on because it was told to them. Never miss an opportunity to tell a story because we are all made up of stories. You know, We all have lives. So if you have something that's as poignant to you as like a song or something, pass that on to someone else. So another thing I kept from this, that I, take it from, that I took from this passage, is that, okay, a young man will fight you, but an old man will hurt you. But I wanted to interpret it, you know, a, a young man will fight you, but an old man, old man will destroy you. And I want to, you know, go with this one. And I thought about this. I thought about this because I was listening to this podcast of these young ladies speaking, talking about how sometimes in relationships, your significant other would like likes to get you into fights, get you into trouble. You know, so if you have a significant other, that's like my mouth, my wife mouthing off and then I have to like step in or something and get my ass whooped by somebody because she was mouthing off or vice versa, you know, so. Or if I was mouthing off and, you know, she would jump in and then she would get her ass whooped or something. You know, so I was thinking about that. Like, you know, being an older man, it's like, you you don't really want to fight a young man because why? Why bother? You know, why why bother to fight? You know, you have things uh, things to think about as an old man. You got to think about, like, you have children, okay? Well, most of us do. Most of us have children or you have a job you have responsibility you have bills to play you don't need to be going out there fighting people getting hurt and or getting arrested or put in prison for fighting somebody or maybe killing them harming them in some way especially a young buck because you know they had like you know an ounce of life you know to live but yet you've lived like a huge life but yet you want to throw that away for fighting a young buck all right you don't fight you don't you know young bucks fight young people fight but old man, old men, they destroy. And so I was thinking about some ways. How can you destroy a young man? You know, like like a little a little whippersnapper, you know, one of those mouthers, you know. So if you see a little let's say let's say you come across a little mouther, one of these little young bucks, right? And he's mouthing off talking to his yin yang. Oh, what are you gonna do, old man? What you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? The best thing to do is what? Walk away. Right. You have nothing to prove to a young person. You really don't. Unless he is threatening the life of, threatening your life and or the life of your family. Or if you see him, you know, doing some stupid shit to somebody else and, you know, you get, and you want to practice some chivalry and jump in. But you know, you know your battles. If you see a young woman fighting with her significant other or something, most likely after you start fighting them, him, she gonna start fighting you because that's usually how those things happen on cops. So I don't know, but you know you don't want to see nobody get their ass whooped or anything like that. So you know, but you make the best decision at the moment. <laughs> I can, that's the only thing I can recommend. But I say, how can you destroy a number man, uh, young man? See, number one, here's one way. 
what you do is let's say most of the young whippersnappers and like one of these like these people like they mouth off and stuff. You take a prized possession. Let's say their car or something. And this is like through month or maybe a month or days of free con. You gotta be smart. You gotta know your enemy. Okay. Know your target before you actually get to, um strike. Okay. So let's say this young man has like a prized possession, a motorcycle, uh, or a car. What you're gonna do is first and foremost is cut all the motherfucking tires. You know, you can't go anywhere. You do it once. Bam, done. So now this is where people mess up, you know, where they go back and they try to do it again. Some people have had girlfriends or significant others who are men or something like smash their car windows and or slash their car, uh, their tires, but then they would do it again. And that's when they get caught. What you do is you do it once. I say, then you move on to the next step. I said, I said, if you destroy one of the possessions, you know, they're one of their prized possessions, you destroy it. And then you move on. Okay, you move on to the next one and say, what's the, what would be the next tip? Mm, I say, if he has a job, most likely he does. And probably no one likes him at his job. Okay. And, or he's just one of those chameleons. He's good. And then he's bad. So I would say you call up and say, hey. Hey, this is calling from the Texas Registry Department or whatever. Make him something. Okay. And you say, hey, sir or madam. Do you have a blah, 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 blah working here? Because I am blah, blah, blah from the sex registry of blah, 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 state or something like that. So you make something up like that. Something that'll put doubt in their minds because they might not believe it. And they call them into the office. They'll ask them like, oh, that is false. I don't know. Somebody's messing around. But yet there's that lingering doubt. So just in case, just that lingering doubt so that people look at them sideways. And so he knows that he's being, like, scrutinized the entire time that he's there. Because word gets round in the offices, you know, that, oh, this person did this. Oh, that, oh, no, 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 no. And so then once that starts getting around, then you ruin his livelihood. Okay, third, another thing I was thinking about, like, okay, how can you destroy a young man instead of killing him? Um, I say, you fuck his mother. I'm just saying, I'm sorry. That just is, you know, that's one of the, if you are of the man who's a single or something like that, you have sex with his mom and or ladies. Um, if you're an older person and you have this little young whippersnapper girl, you sleep with a father. So that's one of the most horrible things that you can do to a young lady. But I'm thinking like, you know, because you got to do that because that's one of the, that's, 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 cause that's going in, that's hitting them like in home territory. So you're like at home, they're at home, you know? And so you have to be invited. You have to infiltrate the home base. Okay. And then destroy it from within. That's all plausible, right? I mean, you can do that, but a lot of it takes time is what I'm saying. It's like, you got to put work in if you want to destroy a young man, but don't fight. You don't need to fight because why you're a warrior. Warriors don't fight because you have life experience. Young whippersnappers, nah. They like to fight and get cut up. Okay, if he's like a young warrior, he wasn't too smart. That's why it takes like monks like so long to become masterful in their craft. Okay, so you have to take that in consideration. So if you ever want to, so don't fight. I'm telling you, old men, don't fight. You don't need to fight. Okay, but you got to take into consideration some of the other things, okay? So, and if you're dealing with a really violent person, then don't go after that person because he's crazy. <laughs> and uh, never trust a young crazy person. No, no, no. You don't want to mess with them. You just kind of like take your licks and you keep on going. But some of these uh, uh, other pretentious little assholes around here, then, you know, you just might want to destroy them. You know, I'm just saying. Or you could do the next best thing and just leave them the fuck alone. Like, Okay, whatever, I'm out. But, you know, a lot of times, sometimes, you know, they just deserve it. You just destroy their livelihood. So just remember that thing, you know. Young men will fight, but an old man will destroy you. Okay, don't take my advice. That's not like, you know, written in stone or anything. But it was just something in my brainstorming. I was thinking, like, if I ever had to destroy a young person, how might I do it? And those things came to mind. It's not a full proof plan but hey it's something to go on you know it gives you know get a basis in there nice for you know for a movie or something i don't know but it's a great concept idea but you know i was thinking just modern day warriors they do exist and a lot of it is just 
in being old in the craft that you make and being at one with yourself. So as we all start to get older, we just have to start thinking about those things and think about what profession we would like to die old in, die young in, you know, die young in your profession. That means get all that stuff out there and do it, do it early so that later on everything is coast, everything is cool. Some of the best people out there have died young in their profession, but then everything else after that, after they perfected everything within their profession that they could, they just moved on and everything was smooth sailing. That's been my episode. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not going to apologize. I just wanted to get that stuff off my chest and I wanted to get a, put a podcast episode out there because we did have problems with the feed, with, um, you know, our iTunes catalog. The episodes were there, then they weren't there. We had a problem with the website and a lot of that stuff has been corrected. So if you see that in your feed where it seems like everything's just new, I'm sorry about that. Just go through, select them all, and just put already played or something like that. Mark them as already played. You don't have to go. They're not new episodes. The new one is this one right here. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys for listening to this episode, listening to me ramble and go off. I just wanted to put forth something for an episode. I thought that... Hey, if I just sat on it and not say anything, then that's just, that's not the Prince way. So go out there and say it. Even if you don't think people will like it, you go and do it. Why? Because you want to, you know, because it makes you feel good. Look up that book. Uh, I'm reading it and I'm hoping to check back on you guys. Maybe I'll write a blog about it, but it's um, Modern Bushido, uh, Living a Life of Excellence. Because I'm at that stage now where I'm thinking about longevity and life and all those things you start thinking about once you get older and you start seeing you know, like your daughter grow up and she's like almost 20 and that's just weird to me hey that's been talking with burritos i am jerry jj wayne graham and that's a wrap but Burritos!